On top of the, I guess it's still morning to everybody. We are here once again, whoa, live from my basement ah, for another fun-filled recording of the WRMS Book Club, the online version, of course, because we are, in fact, online. And even when we're not online, the book club's still online because that's how we reach more people. So here we are with a, I got another book in the mail from the CNIB the other day. It's another one of the Here's Hank ones. They're pretty fun by Henry Winkler. So this here one, which is called Fake Snakes and Weird Wizards by Henry Winkler and Lynn Oliver. Oh, and illustrated by Scott Garrett. Let's not forget him. Good, good. So there looks to be 13 chapters in here and something like 60 pages. So we're going to try and get through it before my fingers freeze off or I can't read anymore. And hopefully it'll take us about an hour and a quarter. So without wasting any more time and yapping your ear off needlessly, here we go. Fake Snakes and Weird Wizards by Henry Winkler, Lynn Oliver, and illustrated by the one and only Scott Garrett. Chapter 1. Hank, my sister Emily, yelled as she ran up to me and grabbed my arm. You have to come meet Ginger. She's the cutest snake I've ever seen. Emily, I said, long, slimy reptiles with no eyelids or ears are not cute. They're creepy. Ginger's not slimy. Her skin's dry. Come on, pet her. I don't pet snakes or anything else that could eat me whole for lunch. Our family was spending the morning at the West End Avenue Street Fair. The whole block was lined with booths selling everything from blueberry muffins to tube socks. Leave it to Emily to find the one snake booth in the place. That girl can sniff out a reptile better than my dog Cheerio can sniff out a hunk of pot roast under the dining room table. Ignoring Emily, I headed for a booth that was selling cool comic books. Emily stood there and stomped her foot. Mom! Dad! She whined. This isn't fair. We just spent 20 minutes waiting for Hank to taste every flavor of ice cream when we knew he was going to pick cherry vanilla all along. Now, the family should do something I want to do. Emily has a good point, Hank, my mom said. I think we should all go say hello to Ginger the snake. Fine, I muttered, but I am not touching her with any part of my body. I will use my eyes and that's it. We walked over to a large purple sign that read Ralph's Reptile Show. Under the sign, there was a table with some reptile displayed different kinds of, in different kinds of glass tanks. A giant tortoise was sitting in the middle of the table. And even I saw, and when I say giant, I mean giant. That guy's shell was just about as big as my bathroom sink. In front of the table was Ralph himself. A long orange, yellow, and black striped snake was wrapped around his arm. Ooh, no thank you. There's Ginger, Emily screamed. Hi, Emily, Ralph said. Oh! I see you've brought your family over to meet Ginger. They're all so excited to get to know her, Emily said, reaching out to stroke Ginger's long back. Make that all but one of us, I added quickly. I hope this... What in the world is that? This, hold on. Some weird braille error brackety thing. Okay, I hope this doesn't hurt your feelings, Ralph, but I'm not a big snake petter. 
Well then, maybe I can interest you in Clive, my snow leopard gecko, Ralph said, or Boris, my adorable blue-tailed skink. Okay, I don't even know what a skink is, but it sounds too close to stink for me to even consider petting. Blah. Ralph was wearing a tan floppy hat that looked like his head had that looked like his head had sweated in it for at least a hundred years. He had on a brown shirt and shorts, brown construction boots, and a shirt with a million pockets and zippers. Maybe that's where he kept his skinks. Is that tortoise even alive? I asked Ralph. He's not moving. You mean Speedy? Ralph patted the tortoise's bumpy head with one, with two fingers. He's probably just thinking about the lettuce leaf he had for lunch. If you want a little more excitement, you should get to know Ginger. She's a hoot. Ralph moved his arm so that Ginger's face was very close to my nose. Maybe it wasn't very close, but it was close enough for me to jump way back. Look at Hank, Emily laughed. Afraid of a little snake? I'm not afraid, exactly, I told her. I just don't happen to love snakes the same way you do. Maybe I'm not an animal person. You love Cheerio, don't you? Of course, but Cheerio's a dog. This means you can play ball with him and take him for a walk. Last time I checked, they don't make leashes for snakes. Snakes are very sweet in their own way, Ralph said. Take Ginger, for instance. She's a mud snake. She loves children. She's a big hit at kids' birthday parties. Wow, Emily said. I wish she could come to mine. It's coming up soon, you know. I already set out, sent out the invitations and everything. Ralph reached down to the stack of brochures he had on the table and handed my dad one. I bring my reptile show to lots of kids' birthday parties, he said, and I'd be happy to come to Emily's. That's a deal, Emily said. I'm going to call everyone I've invited and let them know that there's a new theme to my birthday party. Everybody else has a princess dress-up party. Nobody has a snake before. That's because kids don't like attending birthday parties with creatures whose jaws unlock so they can swallow the birthday cake whole, I said. I don't care what you think, Hank. It's my party. Hold up there, Emily, said Dad, putting the brochure in his coat pocket. We have a lot to discuss here. And we should do that on the way home, my mom said, taking Emily's hand to lead her away from Ralph. See you soon, Emily called out to Ralph. Tell Ginger I'll make a special party hat for her. We'll have to see about that, my dad whispered to Ralph. I understand, Ralph answered. My phone number is on the brochure. Let me know as soon as you decide, because Ginger is a very popular snake. As we walked up 78th Street to our apartment, Emily didn't stop jabbering for a minute. My dad was just the opposite. He was quiet. His eyebrows were all wrinkled, and his mouth was turned down into a frown. Look, Emily, my dad said when we reached our building, I don't want to disappoint you, but we can't have Ralph's reptile show at your party. I glanced at the prices, 
and it's too expensive for us. Emily stopped in her tracks, and so did her mouth. She stared at my dad like he was had just told her the sky was falling. But, Daddy, she cried, I'm only going to turn seven once in my whole life. Well, sweetie, my mom said, we can still have a nice party for you. Emily's eyes filled with tears. She pulled open the front door and ran through the hallway to the elevator. I saw her push the elevator button like she was hammering a nail with her finger. I felt sorry for the elevator button, and my mom felt sorry for Emily. She wants that party so badly, she whispered to my dad. I wish we could afford it, he said, but we can't. We rode up the elevator in silence. Except for the sound of Emily sniffling. When we got to our apartment, my dad opened the door and Cheerio came running out to greet us. Even his wagging tail didn't cheer Emily up. As I petted Cheerio, I remembered how Emily had stood up for me when I wanted to keep him, and my dad had said no. Suddenly, I felt something surprising in the pit of my stomach. It had nothing to do with wanting a pepperoni pizza. What I wanted to do was to help my sister. Now, how weird is that? As soon as we got into our apartment, Emily ran to her room and slammed the door. I followed her, and stood patiently outside of it and knocked until she unlocked it. She never said come in or go away. Emily, I called, open the door. I've got a great idea about your party. Oh, really? And what's your great idea? As if I don't already know. Open the door and I'll tell you. I heard her walk across the carpet. Then, the door opened a crack. What, she said. Well, I began, you want a snake at your party, right? Duh. So, all you have to do is produce one out of the air. Problem solved. I smiled my best Hank Zipser smile, giving her a touch of the old Zipser attitude. It didn't work. She didn't buy it for one minute. Hank, she said, that is the craziest thing you've ever said. Snakes don't appear from thin air. Now, stop bugging me. She started to close the door, but before she could, I stuck my foot in the doorway to block it from closing. I know I had to come up with something, a plan that she'd believe. Unfortunately, I didn't have time. I didn't have a plan either, but to my surprise, when I opened my mouth, this is what came out. Snakes do appear out of thin air, I said. If you know, if you know the right people, and I do. What? she asked. I opened my mouth again, and this time, an even bigger surprise was waiting on my tongue. <coughs> Hopefully this is cold enough to drink. Hello, peppermint tea. It is. The West Side Wizard, I said. Don't tell me you never heard of him. His specialty is pulling snakes out of thin air. And twirling them around above his head. They get a little dizzy, but they love it because it makes kids happy. Emily looked at me suspiciously. 
And how do you know this West Side Wizard, she asked. I've never heard of him. Emily, you may have forgotten, but I'm in the second grade. We second graders know a lot of kinds of all kinds of things. You little first graders don't. You don't know how to subtract, and I do, Emily pointed out. Okay, fine, I told her. You can talk about math all you want. I'll just call the wizard and tell him you're not interested in having him come to your birthday party. No, no, don't do that, Emily. Don't do that, Hank, Emily said. Do you think he would really come? The party's only a week away. I gave her the zipster smile again. He will if I ask him, I said. With confidence. Let me just say right here, I have no idea where the confidence was coming from. I had never heard of the West Side Wizard. It was just something that fell out of my mouth. I noticed that Emily was smiling, and it was the same excited smile she'd had at Ralph's booth at the street fair. Hank, you're the best big brother ever. In the world, even. She reached out and gave me a giant hug. Right in the middle of it, we both realized that this was weird. First of all, we don't hug, and second of all, she grabbed me so suddenly that her braids slapped me in the face. The first, the hug stopped almost as soon as it started, which was just the nice find by me. Emily rushed past me and ran into the living room. Where are you going? I shouted. To call all my friends and invite them and tell them about the West Side Wizard. This is going to be... The best birthday party they've ever been to. On one hand, it was good to see Emily's... Emily was excited. On the other hand, I had gotten myself into a giant pickle. Actually, make that a whole jar of pickles. Who was this West Side Wizard I had made up anyway? Where was I going to find him? And even if I did find him, how was he going to pull a snake out of thin air? Those are good questions, I said to myself. Now, all I need to do is to get answers for them. When I got myself into trouble, there were only two ways out. And their names are Frankie Townsend and Ashley Wong. I can't tell you how many times my two best friends have saved me from disaster. Like the time I spilled glue and my fingers got stuck together. I couldn't even pick up a pencil. I thought I was going to have to take my spelling test holding the pencil in my mouth until Frankie and Ashley pulled me to the sink in the bathroom. I didn't know that soaking your fingers in warm water would melt the glue away. Too bad they couldn't take my spelling test for me too, because as it turned out, I flunked. So, as Emily called her friends, my only thought was to call Frankie and Ashley. Emergency meeting in the clubhouse, I said into the phone. Now. Five minutes later, the three of us were in the basement storage room where we have all of our clubhouse meetings. I started to tell them what had happened, talking a mile a minute. Wait a minute, Zip, Frankie interrupted. You told your sister, what? And you said you knew who? Ashley chimed in. You heard me, I told them. Trying to appear like I knew what I was doing. What's the big deal? The big deal, Frankie said, is that, one, there is no such person as the West Side Wizard. And two, Ashley added, even if he did exist, he couldn't pull a snake out of thin air. No one can. But there actually is a West Side Wizard, I explained. 
You're looking at him. I held my arms out and bowed. Frankie shook his head. Uh, oh, Frankie said. Here comes one of Hank's totally crazy plans. You know how to pull snakes, oh, scarves out of top hats, right? I began. You can teach me the trick. Then all we have to do is tie a snake to the end of the scarf. Uh, ba boom! Magic! Where are we supposed to get this snake? Ashley asked. In the snake aisle at the 99 cent store? Great idea, Ashley, I said. They actually have rubber snakes there. We'll go and pick one up that looks really real. Like, with a forked tongue and everything. Yeah. Well, even if we do find a real looking snake, Ashley said, you still have to figure out a way to look like a wizard. You're not exactly Harry Potter, a Harry Potter look-alike. You can't help me, you can help me make a costume, I told her. You're good at that sort of thing. I could see that this idea interested Ashley. She pushed her glasses back on her nose and swirled her ponytail. She does that when she's thinking. Well, you'd need a great costume that Emily doesn't recognize you in, she said. A wizard hat and robe and a big beard and maybe some sunglasses that cover up most of your face. And I can change my voice so it sounds all deep and old wizard-like. I was starting to love the idea. I switched into my best wizard voice. Behold, with a wave of my arms, I will cast a powerful spell on you. I growled. Uh, you sound like a frog with a cold, Frankie said. Okay, maybe my wizard voice isn't great now, but I can sort of work on it. I'll study old Ms. Bam, the mighty cartoonist. Suddenly, Frankie's eyes lit up. My big brother, Otis, went to his sixth grade Halloween party as Ms. Am, the mighty, he said. I'll bet my mom packed his costume away in one of those boxes. It'd be perfect for you. We jumped up and started reading the labels with all the cardboard boxes that lined the shelves of the storage room. S summer clothes, stuffed animals, pots and pans, soccer trophies, Finally, we came to one labeled Otis. We pulled it down and took off the top. Frankie searched the box, sorting through some baby pictures of Otis. Then he picked up one and burst out laughing. Don't tell Otis, he howled, but here he is lying on a furry rug with his naked butt sticking up in the air, Ashley and I cracked up. Oh, here's what we're looking for, Frankie said, reaching way down in the bottom of the box. He pulled out a pointed hat and a black robe with shiny silver stars on it. There was even a long white beard made of cotton balls glued together. It's perfect. Ashley said. Try it on, Hank. I slipped the robe over my head. 
Otis is tall, so the robe was very long on me. The arms almost touched the floor when I slipped the and I slipped the beard around my ears. The end of it went down to my belly button. Looks good, Frankie said, but I still know it's you. We need dark glasses, Ashley suggested, to cover the rest the rest of your face. She looked over the boxes and found one labeled Mrs. Fink's Vacation Items. Inside, she found a large polka dot bathing suit, lots of flowered sun hats, and a hot pink pair of sunglasses covered with rhinestones. Oh my. Oh no. I'm not wearing those, I said. Well, you can hope Emily doesn't recognize you, Ashley said with a shrug, but I think she will because I can. Okay, okay, you win. I took the pink sunglasses from Ashley and put them on. They worked. With the hat and the robe and the beard, and now the glasses, you'd never know it was me. As I strutted around the clubhouse in my new costume, I felt like my plan was off to a pretty good start. Now all you have to do is learn the magic trick, Frankie said. No problem. That was easy for him to say. Frankie learns everything really fast, but for me, learning new things is, well, hard. I mean, really hard. Don't let yourself think about that now, Hank, I told myself. But I noticed that myself was too nervous to answer. <coughs> we got started right away. Frankie took the elevator up to his apartment and got the magic trick. While he was gone, Ashley said, suggested I practice walking around and talking with my costume on. I was pretty good about not tripping on the robe, but the beard was another story. Every time I moved my lips, the beard slipped off my face and landed in, on the ground. It looked like a fluffy white bunny rabbit fell asleep on my chin. This beard isn't working, I told Ashley. Either it's too big or my face is too small. I don't think your face is going to grow before the party, Ashley answered. So we'll have to come up with another way to keep the beard on. She looked around the storage room and noticed a roll of clear packing tape sitting on one of the shelves. Just the thing, she said. She took the roll of tape and tore off two small pieces. Then I held very still while she taped the beard to my lower sides of the pink sunglasses. Now your beard won't fall down unless you take off your sunglasses, Ashley said. By then, Frankie had returned with the magic trick. To me, it just looked like an empty black velvet bag. Oh, but feast your eyes on this, Frankie said, turning the bag inside out. What do you see? An empty bag. Frankie turned the bag right side out, so it was back to normal. Then, a big... With a big smile, he reached in and pulled out a long chain of colored scarves. Why, he said, it's magic. How'd you do that, I asked. Very well, Frankie laughed. That's what us magicians always say when someone asks us how to do a trick. 
Come on, Frankie. You have to tell me this time, I said. How else am I going to learn? Okay, but you have to promise not to tell it to any other magicians. It's magician code. We don't share our secrets. I promise. Me too, Ashley said. Frankie lowered his voice to a whisper. The scarves are in a hidden compartment inside the lining of the bag. When you reach inside, you have to open the Velcro pocket to get to the scarves without anyone seeing what you're doing. It takes practice. You're going to have to spend a lot of time on this trick, Hankster. Okay, I agreed, but first, let's get the snake and tie it to the end of the scarves. There's no point in practicing without it. I know where they are at the 99 cent store. They're in between the canned artichokes and the little tugboat toothbrushes. Then, what are we waiting for? Ashley asked. We all took the elevator up to the 10th floor and burst into my apartment. My dad was sitting in his leather chair doing a crossword puzzle. Dad, I said, we need to make an emergency trip to the 99 cent store. Could you please take us? My dad didn't look up. He was concentrating. What's a seven letter word for this clue? You don't want to bite this in public. A crossing guard, I answered. Now my dad looked up. How'd you come up with that, Hank? I smiled proudly. My brain is on fire, Dad. My sister Emily walked into the living room, putting her nose where it didn't belong. As usual, first of all, she said, crossing guard has 13 letters, and second of all, the answer is toenail. My dad gave her a big smile. Thank you, honey, he said. Then he put down his puzzle and said, we're going to the 99 cent store. Why don't you join us? Emily, no! Frankie and Ashley and I cried all at once. My dad gave us that look. The one that says, we're going. This way, and it's my way. Dad, Emily, Dad, Dad, Emily can't come. I tried to explain. We have a secret business to do, and only the three of us can know about it. Don't be ridiculous, Hank, my dad said. We don't have secrets in this family. Emily, get your jacket. Boy, was my dad ever wrong about not having secrets. We had one the size of a... We had one the size of Jupiter. Hank, Frankie whispered as we put on our jackets. We can't buy the snake with Emily there. Don't worry about it, Frankie, I said, with my most confident zipser attitude. I have everything under control. Ashley will walk Emily to the other side of the store and I'll pay for the snake. I got my wallet right here. I patted my pocket. It was empty. Okay, so I don't have my wallet right here, I said. I guess the old zipser attitude still needed a little work. I sure hoped I could fix it by the time we got to the store. Ashley, I whispered as soon as we were walked into the 99 cent store, your job is to take Emily over over there, to the art supply section. That way, Frankie and I can pick out the snake without her seeing us. 
How am I supposed to do that? Ashley asked. You know Emily. She's going to want to go to the snake section right away. Tell her that you heard there's a new reptile sticker book or something, I suggested. Then go look for it and take your time. Right-o, Captain. I'm on it, Ashley said, giving me a salute. I wanted to go up to Emily and whisper something in her ear. Emily nodded happily, and the two of them set off for the other side of the store. My dad had already found the crossword puzzles book section and stuck his nose into one, one of the display books. Dad, I said, Frankie and I'll be in the aisle three if you need us. He was so involved in his puzzles that he didn't even grunt. We ran up and down the aisles looking for the rubber snake bin. It turned out it was actually in aisle three between the canned artichokes and the tugboat toothbrushes, just like I remembered. We both dug into the bin, sorting through fat snakes, short snakes, green ones, until we came across a black and orange and yellow striped one. Ginger, I said. Hey, nice to see you again. Don't tell me you and this snake have had pizza together, Frankie said shooting me a look. Of course not. Everyone knows rubber snakes can't digest cheese. Frankie burst out laughing. I did too. Unfortunately, we were also too loud and attracted the attention of a certain almost seven-year-old sister of mine. Out of the corner of my eye, I saw Emily hurrying over to our aisle with Ashley following close behind. I'll distract her, I whispered to Frankie. You go by, Ginger. I'll pay you back later. With that, I spun around and raced down the aisle toward Emily. I wanted to see what was so funny, she, ex she demanded. I put myself right in front of her, as she tried to... I put myself right in front of her and tried to puff up my chest so she couldn't see around me. My, my, blah, my chest doesn't puff up all that much, though, so instead I started talking as fast as I could. Oh my gosh, I said, pointing to an entire shell filled with baby shoes. Look at those! Aren't they so cute? Look at the little things. You've never seen them. Emily turned around and looked at the display of baby shoes. Ashley understood what I was doing and jumped in too. Oh, Emily, those baby shoes would look so perfect on your iguana, she said. Of course, you'd have to buy two pairs. No problem, I said. I've saved some allowance money. I'd like to get something for Catherine. Do you have a fever, Hank? Emily asked. I've never heard you say anything nice about Catherine in my entire life. Well, it's time I did, I said. She is one lovely lizard. I took Emily by the hand and dragged her over to the baby shoes. I glanced at Frankie and saw that he was heading to the cash register, but he wasn't there yet. I had to stall for a little while longer. So I reached out and picked up two pairs of pink baby sneakers that had raised had rainbow colored something. 
had rainbow colored ponies on them. I slipped each shoe into one of my onto one of my fingers and moved them around up and down like they were dancing. Hi, Emily, I said in a high, squeaky voice. It's me, Catherine. I'm a happy little iguana because I'm dancing in these baby shoes. They're so soft, my claws feel like they're walking on pillows. Emily squinted at me like I had lost my mind. I could see I was losing her attention, but I had to keep up my performance. I started to twirl around singing a made-up song. I'm a dizzy little lizard, watch me twirl, I sang, flapping my arms around. I must have flapped a little too hard because I lost my balance and my entire body crashed into the stack of baby shoes. The next thing I knew, the whole display came tumbling down around me. It was raining tiny sneakers. Hank! Emily screamed. Look what you've done! All the shoppers around me stopped and stared. One of them had a stroller with twins in it. Both babies started to cry. Then a little boy came running over to the pile of shoes and dove into them. When he came up for air, a pair of baby blue running shoes were hanging off his ear. Another kid pointed and laughed and then picked up a shoe and threw it in the air just for fun. It landed right on my head. Suddenly, there was a crackling noise on the loudspeaker. Clean up on aisle three, a man's voice said. And before I knew it, two workers with brooms were at my side, sweeping the shoes into a pile. My dad had arrived, too, standing over me with his hands on his hips. Hank, why is it that trouble follows you wherever you go, he asked. I can't leave you alone for two minutes. Actually, Mr. Z, Ashley said, I think we were alone for at least three minutes this time. This could be a new record for Hank. Ashley, I appreciate your attempt at humor, but this is not the time, my dad answered. Look at this mess Hank has created. Emily shook her head. I'm so sorry about my brother, she said to one of the workers. I looked up to the front of the store and saw Frankie. He was holding a brown paper bag above his head. Frankie's got it, Ashley whispered in my ear. I turned to the worker who was cleaning up the shoes. Can I help you, I asked. That's okay, kid. We got it. Accidents happen. I'm so sorry, I said. Thanks for understanding. Then, turning to Emily and my dad, I added, Okay, let's go. But what about Catherine's sneakers? I gave her a look like her brains had dropped onto the floor in front of her in a pile. Catherine, I said, why would she need shoes? As I ran down the aisle to meet Frankie, I high-fived myself. The plan didn't come off exactly as I had imagined, but the snake was in the bag. Now all I had to do was learn how to pull it out of there. Hank, Frankie said to me, this is the 55th time I've shown you this trick. You have to focus if you're ever going to learn it. We were in the clubhouse and I had been working with Frankie after school for for something like the time. Four days. 
I was proud of myself for having found the velvet bag and the scarves. I had stuffed them into my backpack, but now every time I tried to pull the snake out of the bag, something went wrong. I'm really trying, Frankie, as hard as I can. I'm not messing up on purpose, you know. I know I have to learn this trick, but I don't think I can. Time's running out, Ashley said. It's already Thursday, and Emily's party is on Saturday. I'll never be able to do it before then, I said with a big sigh. You're the magician, Frankie. Make it happen. Why don't you do it? Hank, can you do, can you do this? I believe in you. If you give up now, you'll really feel bad. But if you get it, Ashley added, you've, you're going to feel good forever. You'll never forget what you did for Emily. But this is starting to really freak me out, I said. All Emily talks about is how many people have said yes to her party last night. At dinner, she said there were 17 for sure's and another 10 maybes on the list. Not one person said no. Okay, Frankie said, taking a deep breath. Then let's stop wasting time. You've got to learn it. I rolled up my wizard robe sleeves and put on the sunglasses with the beard again. I took a moment to scratch my nose because the cotton balls tickled my nostrils. Hankster, Frankie said, you have to become the wizard. You are now the West Side Wizard and wizards don't scratch. Well, this one does. Fine, Frankie said, just Go on with the tricks. Okay, I began. First, I put my hand in the air, then I drop it into the velvet bag until I find the secret pocket with the Velcro strip. Then I say magic words. What is it again, Frankie? Frap a fruit. Or, no, it's grapefruit. Let's go with that. No, not that. Uh, kiwi? It doesn't even sound like a grapefruit. Zengai, I repeated in my best wizard voice. I thought I felt the scarves tucked into the secret pocket. So, first, th so far, so good. When I pulled open the scarves, the whole bag flew across the room and landed smack in the middle of M Mrs. Fink's laundry basket. That's it, I yelled, pulling my beard and glasses off. I can't do this. I give up. But, but Hank, Ashley began. No, but Hank's about it, I told her. I'm so frustrated I can't even scream. In fact, I think maybe, maybe I will. Ah! I shouted so loud I thought my Tonsils were going to fly out of my mouth. Hank, this isn't helping, Frankie said, covering his ears. If you keep this up, they're going to throw us out of here, and then you'll have no place to practice. I'm done practicing anyway, I declared. Done, done, and done. Oh, by the way, have I said the word done? But what about Emily and her party, Ashley asked. You promised her a snake. 
are you just going to go back on your promise? I'm going to solve this another way, I said. The right way. Before they could ask me another question, I hurried out the, of the clubhouse and headed for the elevators. Frankie and Ashley followed me up to my apartment. When I got inside, I picked up the phone and called Papa Pete. Hanky, he said. What are you up to, my boy? Oh, about four foot three, I told him. He roared with laughter. That was our special joke. Papa Pete, can you help me? I asked. I need you to come up and pick me up. I have to visit, I have to visit a friend. I have a favor to ask him and I don't want my mom and dad to know. You're not in any trouble, are you? Papa Pete asked. No, no more than usual, I said. Papa Pete is great because he doesn't bother you with a whole lot of questions like most grown-ups do. He just tries to help. I'll be there soon, he said. As I hung up the phone, Frankie and Ashley were staring at me. I'm not following this, Frankie said. What friend? What favor? His name's Ralph, I explained. He's Ginger's owner. I'm going to ask him if he and Ginger can come to Emily's party. But didn't your dad say it was too expensive? Ashley asked. That's where the favor part comes in. I'm going to ask if I can do it for two dollars and 63 cents. That's how much money I saved in my secret safe. Do you think Ralph will come up with for that go for that? Frankie asked. It's not very much money. Snake wise. I don't know, Frankie, I said, but like you just said, I can't let Emily down, so it's worth a try. Are you guys coming? Oh, I wouldn't miss this, Ashley said. You're going to have to see. You're going to see Hank the Hurricane Zipser in action, I said. At the very moment, I have was, I was so positive I could convince Ralph to come to Emily's party. But a few minutes later, when the hurricane died down, I wasn't so sure anymore. We took the bus to Ralph's apartment. It was downtown on 19th Street, above a discount suitcase store. We had to walk up three flights of stairs, slower than usual, because Papa Pete had to rest on each landing. When we got to Ralph's door, the bell didn't work, so we knocked and waited and waited some more. Maybe he's not home, Ashley said. Oh, he's there, I answered. I called ahead and told him we were coming. How'd you get his number? From the brochure in Emily's room. She sleeps with it under her pillow. Good planning, Hanky, Papa Pete said. I like the way you think your head think your think bleh. I like the way you think ahead. Suddenly the door flew open and there was Ralph. Ginger was wrapped around his arm and Boris the blue tailed skink was relaxing on his shoulder. Ginger shot out her tongue at us, which made Frankie and Ashley take a giant step back. Ralph laughed. You don't have to be afraid of 
You don't have to be afraid, kids, he said. Ginger flicks her tongue to help her smell. It's how she knows you're here. Good thing I took a shower this morning, I said. I wouldn't want to gross Ginger out. Ralph threw his head back and laughed loudly. We all joined in. Our friend Hank is really funny, Frankie said. So I see you, Ralph answered. Come in and meet the rest of the family. The inside of Ralph's apartment was like a zoo, except you didn't have to pay to get in. Under the glass cages, there were glass cages everywhere, and inside each cage was some kind of reptile. Speedy, the giant tortoise, was sitting on the couch watching TV. I think it was an... A something. A commercial about an exercise machine, but I'm not sure. Is Speedy interested in working out, I asked? I bet it would be a hard it would be hard to do sit ups with a shell. Ralph laughed again. You're on a roll, kid. Now what can I do for you? You said you needed a favor. I put my biggest smile on and took a deep breath so all the words would come out the right way. Ralph, I began. Here is my problem. My sister, as annoying as she is, has only one wish in the whole wide world, and that wish is for you and Ginger to come to her birthday party. It's this Saturday at noon. I remember talking about this with your family at the street fair, but your parents never called back, Ralph said. That's why I'm here. I think a personal invitation is always best. Don't you think so, Ralph? Don't you think so, Papa Pete? Yes, personal is good, Papa Pete agreed. Ralph, I said. I'm going to give you three reasons why you have to come to Emily's party. One, the birthday cake will be so delicious, it'll make your socks go, your socks go up and down. Number two, you will make an almost seven year old girl's dream come true. And three, I have here in my pocket $2.63. And it's all yours. I paused and gave my best. My best. Upper and lower teeth grin. He was quiet for a minute. I took that as a good sign. I flashed Frankie and Ashley a confident grin. This was the Hank Zipser Hurricane in action, I thought. Hank, you've done a good job here. I think you've saved the day, I told myself. Ralph walked over to his dusty desk and pulled out a spiral notebook with a picture of two snakes on the cover. I think they were hugging, but without arms. He brought the notebook over to me and opened it to a page with a calendar on it. Hank, I am so sorry, he said, but as you can see on this calendar, I am busy every day for the next three weeks. This Saturday, Ginger and I have an appearance at the Central Park Zoo, and then we're performing at the at Tiffany Nelson's birthday party on Park Ave. But Ralph, I said, you know how much you you love your reptiles? 
There's only one other person on the planet who feels the way you do about them. My sister. If you come to her party, this will be the best birthday present I could ever give her. Forever. You're not going to believe this, but when I said those words, I actually felt a lump in my throat and kind of, you know, the kind you get before you cry. I meant every word I was saying. Ralph reached out and put his hand on my shoulder, which brought Ginger dangerously close to my nose. Hank, he said, I think you're a wonderful young man and a great big brother, but there is nothing I can do. Saturday is completely booked. I'm so sorry. I felt another hand on my shoulder. It was Papa Pete. Hank, you tried your best, he said, but business is business and Ralph can't do it. So thank the kind man and let's be on our way. We've taken up enough of his, uh, taken up enough of his time. I shook hands with Ralph and tried to smile at Ginger. I didn't smile at Boris, but he didn't seem to care. I guess skinks are like that sometimes. As we left, I heard Ashley call out, By the way, Ralph, Hank lives at 210 West 78th Street. In case anything, 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 you know, changes. That's between Broadway and Amsterdam, Frankie added. I really appreciated that both of my friends were still trying their best, even when there, it seemed to be no hope left anymore. As for me, all I was thinking was that I had one more day to learn the trick. Right. Somebody tell that to my brain. That day and the next, I spent every spare minute in the clubhouse with Frankie and Ashley, going over and over the magic trick again and again and again. Finally, on Friday night at exactly 8.17 p.m., I got it right. And not only that, I got it right three times in a row after that. Costume on. Hand into velvet bag. Find secret pocket. Pull out handkerchief chain. Say, Zengai! And produce the rubber snake. Wave hands in the air and take a bow. I did it all. See, Zip, Frankie said. I told you that... If you kept your mind on it, you could do it, and you did. You are now officially the West Side Wizard, Ashley added. There's only one thing left to do. Hand over your beard. Excuse me, I said in my wizard voice. It took me a long time to grow this. Now isn't that time to be cut? Hank, Ashley said, I have to fill the hole with another cotton ball. You're going to have 25 kids looking at you tomorrow. That's 50 eyeballs. Well, Ashley glued a cotton ball onto my beard Frankie and I opened a package of chocolate chip cookies I had brought down to the clubhouse with us. 
As I chewed my cookie, I couldn't stop the smile from spreading across my face. Dude, don't smile so wide when you're eating, Frankie said. I can see chocolate chunks stuck to your teeth. I can't help it, Frankie. I just feel so proud for learning something I thought I couldn't ever do. You're going to be great, Ashley added. Those little kids will be amazed. And Emily is going to be so happy she won't know what to say to you. Oh, that'll never happen. She hasn't stopped talking about it all week. The last thing Ashley and Frankie and I did that night was to carefully pack the costume into a shopping bag so I could sneak it back into the apartment without Ash Emily seeing it. We arranged to meet in our clubhouse at a few minutes before noon the next morning. When I got back to the apartment, Emily and my mom were busy decorating the living room for the party. My mom was blowing up balloons, and Emily was using her colored markers to draw pictures of snakes and lizards on them. She wasn't a bad artist, either. One of her drawings actually looked like Boris the blue-tailed skink. Without even looking up, Emily said, What's in the bag, Hank? I swear that girl has eyes glued on the side of her head. Nothing, I answered. Hurrying into my bedroom and closing the door, my mom followed me in to my room. Hank, she said, I know what you're up to. Frankie's mom and I have been talking, and I know that you're planning a surprise for Emily. You didn't say anything to Emily, did you? Of course not. I wouldn't spoil your plan, but I want to warn you, it's not easy to entertain 25 first graders. I hope you know what you're doing. Don't you worry, Mom. The wizard is with us. Well, then good luck to you, honey. Oh, I mean... Him. To him. Good luck to him. As my mom walked out the door, Emily stuck her head in. Have you checked the... Have you checked with the wizard lately, she asked. I can't wait to meet him. I've never met a real live wizard before. Me neither, I said. Emily looked surprised. Wait a minute, Hank. I thought you said you knew him. There it was. My foot in my mouth. Actually, both my feet were in there this time. When would I let learn to keep my big mouth shut? Oh, yeah. I stammered. Uh, of course I know him. I was just joking with you, Emily. A little birthday party humor, right? Right. Well, I don't think it's funny. I've been looking forward to this all week. It's not nice to tease me the night before the best day of my life. The last thing I saw was her braids whip around through the air as she turned around and slammed the door shut as she left. Emily's words rang in my mind. The best day of her life. Now, she wasn't kidding around. She wasn't kidding around about this wizard thing. My stomach did a flip-flop as I looked at the paper bag with my wizard costume shoved inside. I realized that I had better come through or 
I was going to have one sad sister on my hands. The next day, was party day. The sun decided to come out bright and clear. Emily took it as a good sign. You see, she said at breakfast, even the sun is happy it's my birthday. I bet the West Side Wizard made the sun come out, I said, popping the rest of my buttered toast into my mouth. Do you really think so, Hank? She asked her eyes wide with excitement. He must have incredible powers. Of course he does. I gulped. Let's just hope he brings them all with him today. I got up and hurried into my room. I practiced the trick for one hour straight till I got it right about half the time. That was better than getting it right none of the time, but not as good as getting it right all the time. A few minutes before noon, I took my costume and headed for the clubhouse. Our living room was already filling up with kids. Frankie and Ashley were waiting for me at the clubhouse by the elevator. It's crazy up there. In my living room, I told them, it's swarming with first graders. They're like bees, but without stingers. Frankie and Ashley helped me into my costume. Ashley adjusted the beard and added more tape to the glasses to ensure it held to, on to the gla on, onto the arms of the glasses. Okay, you're ready, Frankie said checking me up and down. We headed to the elevator. I was pretty nervous. I'm gonna go out there first and get those wild kids to sit down, Frankie calm, said calmly. Ashley will wait by the front door of your apartment. I nodded, trying to listen carefully. Frankie continued, when she hears me say, make some noise for the West Side Wizard, she'll open the door, that's when you come in, and work your way through the crowd. Just be sure not to step on any kids while you're there. Yeah, Ashley agreed, because if you do, they'll kick you. Trust me, I know. When the elevator doors opened onto the 10th floor, I could feel my heart beat faster under my heavy wizard coat. I hope this goes okay, I whispered to Ashley. You did the trick perfectly last night, she reminded me, just do something you practiced and you'll be fine. Frankie went into the living room. From the hall, I could hear his introduction. The kids applauded and cheered. Ashley opened the door for me, which was, this was it. Showtime! I walked into the living room, holding my arms high up in the air. Behold, all you tiny tots, I called out in my best wizard voice. The West Side Wizard has arrived. From the corner of my eye, I could see Papa Pete leaning against the wall. He winked. I wonder how he knew it was me. As I walked by the, the kids, I could hear lots of... oohs and ahs coming from their direction. Hey, this was working. At least it was until one little boy 
with a mouthful of jelly, be jelly beans, reached up and tugged on my coat. I whirled around and gave him the stare of a lifetime. What is your name, child? I boomed. Eugene, Eugene Patton, he said. Well, Eugene, the wizards, the wizard does not like to be touched, I growled, nor does his coat. Eugene actually looked kind of scared and leaned back away from me. I was feeling the wizard power and it felt pretty good. I reached the front of the crowd and turned slowly around to face them. Is there an Emily Zipser here? I half shouted. Emily was sitting cross-legged in the front row holding Cheerio in her lap. He's such a long wiener dog that even when curled up, his hind legs were dangling on the rug. When he saw me, Cheerio sniffed the air and let out a little whimper. I looked away, hoping he wasn't didn't rec was going to recognize me. Emily put Cheerio down and jumped up to face me. Here I am! Oh, great! Hi, wizard, she said. Did you bring a snake for me? Why, yes, I did, I called out. But let me warn you, folks. You all must stay seated and remain quiet. Snakes have very sensitive hearing. No, they don't, Emily shouted back. They hear through their bones. Wouldn't you know it, my know-it-all sister chose this moment to give everybody a reptile lesson. You are correct, birthday girl, I said. Now, please sit down and hold your dog tightly. Frankie, will you please hand me the magic snake bag very carefully. Frankie handed me the bag. I turned it inside out and showed the kids it was completely empty. No one could see the Velcro pocket. Observe that there is nothing in this bag but air, I said. I pushed the wizard coat sleeves up as high as I could, they could go and noticed there was nothing in my sleeve. I added, showing them my arms, there's nothing in there except for very skinny arms, Eugene Patton shouted out. He should talk. His arms were so skinny they looked like pencils without erasers on. Silence, please. Keep your eyes focused on the bag and prepare to be amazed. I will now say the magic word. Are you ready? Yes, Emily yelled, and the other kids joined in. Snake, 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 they chanted. Even Cheerio barked in time with their chant. Silence, I shouted. A hush fell over the crowd. I waved one hand wildly over the opening of the bag. In my best wizard voice, I called out, Zingai!
I said it a second time. Zingo E! Just in case the first time didn't work. Then, I reached into the bag and found the Velcro pocket. Yes! So far, so good. My fingers fumbled around and found the handkerchief chain. All I needed now was one good tug and it would come flying out with the rubber snake attached. zing -e! I hollered one more time, just for fun, grabbing the end of the handkerchief chain between my thumb and pointer fingers. I yanked, and unbelievable as it may seem, the colorful handkerchiefs came flying out of the bag, dragging the rubber snake behind. I grabbed the snake and spun it around over my head so no one could tell it was just a rubber one. And they all waited for the sound of the applause. It never came. As I twirled the snake above my head, Cheerio leaped off Emily's lap and flew through the air toward my beard, grabbing the end of his... Grabbing the end in his mouth, he pulled on it like a play toy. I think he thought it was... Mousy, his white furry toy that I throw for him. Anyway, he yanked on it with all of his might. Cheerio, get down, I said in my wizard voice. How do you know my dog's name? Emily called out. Oops. The wizard knows all. I covered my mistake. I should have known that Cheerio would recognize my scent. He sniffed the air, his little brown nose working as hard as it could. He was so glad to see me and he jumped up even higher getting a big hunk of my beard in his mouth. He tugged it and growled at it, just like he would do when we were would wrestle with Mousy. I tried desperately to hold on to my beard, but Cheerio thought we were playing and pulled even harder. With one mighty tug, he yanked it, the entire beard off my face pulling the sunglasses off along with it. I watched in horror as the beard and the sunglasses went flying through the air. I just stood there with my own face hanging out. All the little kids burst into wild laughter. Ashley took off after my beard which was still in Cheerio's mouth. Frankie, good friend as he is, tried to save the day. As you can see, kids, the wizard's beard mag bleh, the wizard has magical powers and can change his face to look like anybody he wants. That's not anybody, Emily screamed. It's just my goofball brother, Hank. Okay, I said. It's me, but still, I made a snake appear, didn't I? And how cool is that? Happy birthday! You call that a snake? Emily cried. I call that a thing that you got on sale at the 99 cent store. All the kids were howling with laughter by now, but not Emily. She looked like she was going to cry. Hey, Emily. Eugene called out. You promised us a real snake, not some stupid rubber thing. Emily stood up and started to run to her bedroom. My mom caught her halfway. Well, we still have delicious cake, everyone, she said, trying extra hard to be cheerful. 
Emily, come on. Let's light the candles. She put her arm around Emily and gently led her back down the hall to the dining room where the cake was waiting. It was shaped like a snake and when Emily saw it, she almost burst into tears again. I wish that was real, she said. I'd have it eat Hank. Just then the doorbell rang. My dad made his way across the living room to answer it while Papa Pete helped Mom light the candles. Before you blow out the candles, make a wish, my mom said. I wish Ginger the Snake was here, Emily said. She is, a voice rang out. Everyone's head spun around at the same time, and we saw Ralph being led into the dining room by my dad. Ginger was wrapped around his arm, and Boris the Skink was happily riding on his shoulder. Everyone in the room let out a giant gasp, the loudest one coming from my sister Emily. Ginger, she screamed, dashing over to Ralph and reaching up to pet Ginger's Ginger gently on the head. I can't believe you came. Daddy, thank you so much. I didn't do anything, my dad said. Neither did I, my mom added. Me neither, Papa Pete said. It was your big brother, little lady, pa Ralph said. He came all the way down to my apartment to invite me here today. But you said you don't, you couldn't make it, I said to him. I left the other party early so I could pay Emily a visit on her birthday, Ralph answered. Why? I asked him. I didn't understand. Ralph took off his big brown hat and turned to Emily. I was mighty impressed with your brother, Hank, he said to her. He wanted this to be the best birthday you ever had. When I was your age, hey, even now, I wish I'd had a brother like that. Hank really cares about you, and I just couldn't say no to him. Ashley turned around and slowly looked me right in the eye. Oh, sorry, Emily turned around and slowly looked me right in the eye. You did this for me, she whispered. I just shrugged. He did, Frankie said. We were there. What happened next was truly amazing in a creepy kind of way. Emily threw both arms around me and squeezed me so hard my eyes almost maybe popped out a little bit. I love you, Hank, she said. I felt like she was waiting for me to say, I love you too, back. But luckily, I didn't have to, because just at that moment, Ginger decided to slither off Ralph's arm and rest her head on Emily's head. And Ginger loves you, Ralph said. I think she's saying it. She wants to do a show. How about it, kids? Everyone cheered, and we all went into the living room. If Ginger was tired from the other party, she sure didn't show it. She let each kid pet her and didn't even hiss once. At the end of the show, Emily got to hold Ginger and smile to her, into her snaky eyes. I stood next to Papa Pete as... He took pictures with Emily's. Uh, took pictures of Emily's beaming, blah, Emily's beaming face. Then he turned to me and put a hand on my shoulder. She's one happy girl, Papa Pete said. You did a good thing there, Hanky. The good thing is that Ralph showed up. I said, my magic trick was a total flop. 
Don't you believe that, Papa Pete said. You have the real magic, and that is... your big caring heart. No magic trick can top that. I have to say, it did feel really good to have helped Emily get the birthday party of her dreams. I felt proud and happy. That is, until Ginger decided to give me a kiss. Trust me, folks, that was a real party ender. The end. Well, thank you. Hope you enjoyed that. Uh, the, a little rough toward the end there because my fingers are cold and I couldn't really feel the dots. But it is what it is, and we made it through, and we're all done. So we'll see you next time with another book of some kind, and who knows what it might be. Where in the heck is it? There we go. Later. <laughs>